It is time. It is the Overwatch Contenders final for Europe. Two teams going head to head. Let's introduce our first finalist. This is British Hurricane. I came into the team in January. I was the second last member after Kip. Kip came after me. Yeah, I kind of like my team. They're okay. Uh, I like most that we joke around a lot. We can make fun of everything. Everything anyone does is a joke to us. So it's pretty funny. Fun to be with them. Before coming to this event, we went to Sweden for a boot camp with the whole team. And we did a lot of foot review and a lot of scrims, and I think that prepared us really well for this tournament. We are very confident to get to the finals and get first place. Um, but I do think that all the four EU teams that are left are all very close to each other, so anything could happen. They were the favorites coming in to the European season. It is British Hurricane and we see Bucket over there. Interesting story and, and just to show you how serious this team is. I mean, he is a doctor during the day and they say that he plays more Overwatch than them on the we uh, the rest of the team on the weekends. They're taking this seriously. That's a scary amount of brain power and scarily little sleep as well. Bucket is incredibly impressive. And uh, you know where he puts his medical prowess to the test? He plays it on Anna. He's possibly the best Anna in all of Europe. He is one of the best Annas in all of Europe. There they are, that is British Hurricane. But they have to go up against the defending champions. They've had a bit of a rocky start to the competition, but they're coming in strong. This is Team Giganti. The most I love about my team is uh, pretty much the the players, I've known some of them for uh, quite some time now. We being in the same nationality and um, just being friends in overall, that's good. Before this event we practiced a lot. I'd say we play six hours of scrims and everyone plays more after and before that. Uh, we practice really hard, hopefully it shows. The biggest challenge in this tournament is probably going to be what we expect at the start. It's probably going to be Angry Titans at the start, but um, if we get into the finals, we'll probably look up for British Hurricane. I think everyone in our team is really happy to be in the Contenders finals. It kind of validates our new team in the scene. I chatted a bit to ITK yesterday after their win and he mentioned to me because they've had quite a shaky start to the season and he said, you know, he actually plays competitive football and he has been doing that for 10 years and he said in order to learn to win, you have to learn to lose as well and they feel that, that the losses that they struggled through in the beginning of the season have made them all the more stronger now. Yeah, it's especially important to lose because you can then see the glaring weaknesses of your team, right? And coming up against British Hurricane, you know they're going to be able to spot that out. They've got a fantastic coaching staff, so them picking apart these VODs is going to aid them in their victory. But if Giganti can lose and then just uh, look at those weaknesses themselves, it's an easy way to kind of patch those things up. Let's talk about that coaching staff, though, because we mention the coach for Team Giganti a lot because he is incredible. We say Overwatch League level coach. Leg Day, you chat to him a lot. What do you think he's planning for this final? Well, General Sator je uh, definitely has a dynasty under his belt. So many of his players have gone over to the Overwatch League. Davin's the only one yet remaining in Overwatch contenders, but he's leading this team to victory as well. And we do know that Sator is probably one of the only coaches who could have overnighted this to prepare for British Hurricane after a victory over Angry Titans. Because, of course, you've got to prepare for your semi-final opponent first. You've got to make it to the finals before you can win them. 
Here's, here's something that, that I'm going to throw this to you, and it's going to be a little bit tough, but, but I've been thinking about this a lot. When we chatted to Hurricane before the semifinals, they specifically said that they had spent all their time focusing on CIS Hope. Because the thing about CIS Hope is no one knew what to expect from them, so all they did was practice how they were going to play against that team. That's concerning when you think they're now coming up against Team Giganti, but on the other side, Team Giganti has said that their weakness is that they struggle to adapt. Hurricane has been practicing to play a team that always adapts. So how is this going to play out now, knowing what both of these teams have kind of tried to do leading into the final? There's two pieces of the same puzzle, right? Because if they are incredible masters of adapting, that being CIS Hope, hey, Giganti, if they struggle to, no worries, because we can just flex around that. Hurricane also have such a large hero pool amongst all of them that we, we've known them to run triple DPS throughout the entire season. They've, they can run triple tank, they can run quad tank, they can run just the standard 2-2-2 dive. I mean, Craggy is a master of Zaya, Tracer, and then you've got Hafi Cool. This guy, he has a Swiss army knife when it comes to things, in all honesty. This guy can play Sombra, he can play tanks, he can play literally anything the team needs to kind of fit in there. So coming up against Giganti, who can't and say they struggle to flex well, you should, you got to put it in perspective that Hurricane actually, if they just change their strategy up a little bit mid-game, it might throw Giganti off kilter. And hey, we mentioned Sator, so we're going to do the other name drop, Shifty, the coach of British Hurricane. I imagine the second they got off stage yesterday with the win, he was trying to go through the vaults, he was here in the stadium, I imagine, watching Giganti, looking for every single nuance in their play and trying to plan out how they're going to be doing this. Shifty is with them here in Poland, of course, so he's going to be there live, giving them all the information that they need to uh, try and bring this one out. Do you think that the pressure is on Davin? I mean, he did lead that team last year to victory. The whole team gets picked up for Overwatch League, except him. He's got a whole new lineup here. I mean, he's going to want to win this because ultimately it, it cements the fact that, hey, I'm actually really good. Two teams, two finals, like enough now. Come and find me, OWL. I think he cemented his, uh, his prowess, honestly, on DPS and on tanks yesterday. His grab placement was just absurdly good. And like RCK was saying to me yesterday, you know, I was getting the one getting the kills, no worries. Yeah, I'll check my bomb in. But it was all Davin that was setting me up. And it was actually LH Cloudy as well, making sure they secured that Rhine shield, either the break or just the, the charge into him. So Davin's uh, ability to kind of place himself on the map and know his role within the team is extremely important because when you're looking towards OWL, they're normally looking to fill a specific role, right? But Davin covering each individual one of these bases is just going to be a gold mine for some of these teams. Who do you think, when, when you look at these two teams, what do you think the, the strength on either side is? We know what they say their strengths are, but what is Hurricane's strength versus Team Giganti's? I think Hurricane's strength is definitely, we've got huge individual playmaking potential, both Kib and Craggy, famous names throughout Overwatch because they just go so big, and you see them in all the red clips, you see them in all the highlight clips, just like, okay, yeah, that was amazing. Whereas on the side of Team Giganti, I think it's for teamwork. We mentioned it before, we've mentioned it so many times, because it's just so prevalent to their playstyle. The synergy between their tank line just second to none. Their communication is, is really good, though, because we know they're, they're a team. They're all in the same country. They're all speaking the same language. That does help quite a bit. Oh, yeah, it does. An absolute ton. I mean, sometimes if you want to explain something really high, detailed, you know, we need to do this because of X, Y, and Z, and then we need to do this little nuance of play. Sometimes that could get lost in translation. Obviously, a lot of the British Hurricane players are from different regions. Obviously, Craggy's from Denmark. You've got Funny Astro, for example, from the UK. And maybe that will trip them up just a little bit. I'm not entirely sure. But that sheer mechanical skill, and even we've seen Kib, normally this Genji god, right? But he's actually stepped on to more of a supportive DPS role. Another player that can really flex to their team and flex to the role that that they actually necessarily need is just uh, is just amazing for them. And we really can't forget about Ripper and Master, the support duo of Giganti. They are possibly the best support duo in all of Europe, just as a two-piece, as a unit, they are so good. Leg Day has to get the last word in every time. That's okay. Here we go. This is it. It is your final for Europe. They are so evenly matched on paper, it is impossible to guess who will take it. British Hurricane up against Team Giganti. Let's get this payload moving and move straight on to Des and Trid. Thank you very much, Sam. Hello to you there in the Avionia Planet, but also to you watching at home. We're here for the Contenders Europe Season 1 Finals between British Hurricane and Team Giganti. And me and Des have been longing for this rematch since they first faced off in that group stage. And even before that, back in week one, who were the teams everyone was speaking about? It was Hurricane, it was last season's champions in Giganti. Everyone wanted to see those two lock heads, and it almost felt like we were slightly spoiled by the last series. The 4-0, today is a chance to fix the wrongs. We're going to Nepal to kick things off, and this is obviously British Hurricane's choice coming in as the highest seed from the bracket, and it's a map that they are no strangers to. 
Absolutely not. And Giganti probably look at this and there's a slight sigh in their voice as well because last time they played this map, it went 2-0 to zero in favor of Hurricane. The triple DPS strap, we see them play quite a lot and Sanctum works wonders for them. Wouldn't be surprised to see them try and employ the same today, but what they've got to be aware of is Giganti know what went wrong last time. The dive was a bit miscoordinated, a few things looked a bit off. They will have rectified that and Hurricane have got to be aware of this, otherwise they might find themselves being caught unawares. Absolutely, and with your momentum-based team like Hurricane often is touted as being, this first map is so important for them. And also for Giganti, if they can halt the train before it starts moving, it makes it all that much easier to reverse it. Absolutely. Let's not forget, though, yesterday, CIS hoped they dropped the first map on Oasis to those guys, and they still managed to recover and win the series out 3-1. and one. But Giganti, they'll be looking to press on that wound a little bit. They want to open up that first map and go, this one's ours, the second one's ours. We want to go into the half with a strong advantage, and here we are. Here we go. Nepal to kick off this European final between British Hurricane and Team Giganti. The OWL-backed academy team and, of course, the defending champions. All to play for for these two teams and cement themselves as the kings of European Overwatch. And what a show it's going to be as well. We see a lot of Reaper going on, on this map especially, especially on the point itself where it's incredibly scrappy. But you can hear the hype. It's not just the players, it's the, fa it's the fans as well, it's the crowd. It's us here behind the scenes as well, Trid. Everyone is super excited for this. As we're counting down the preparation to attack, it's not going to be clear what these teams are running, but if it's anything like their European counterparts or just Europe as a whole on the Pals, particularly Shrine, we could see some triple tanks. But until they leave that spawn room, nothing is to be taken for granted. And it's quite funny because we often speak about Europe being this very tank-heavy region, but actually these two teams in their last series played dive more often than they played tank. So don't be surprised if you see a lot of changes coming between the teams as they try and figure each other out. British are okay running with the Sombracer composition, while Team Giganti, they're going straight to the wall with that quad tank. In fact, it's triple DPS coming through. Happy Cool showing us that Flax once again. Now, the problem is here is they are going to struggle to move this quad tank composition off of the point unless they manage to get one of the picks down. And generally, we speak a lot about Sombracer as being the answer to quad tanking, that you can flank them, you can get these shields looking the wrong way, and then you capitalize. And so far, they're going for the big push here. Driving onto the back line, using Funny Astro to amp it up, and Craggy's already took out Marsa. They've not got control of the point just yet. It's Giganti with that quad tanker who are in control. And here's the counter-attack with the Coalescence, burning through everyone, keeping his team topped up. And it doesn't look like British Hurricane are going to be able to take this first cap. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what happens when you poke down a tank comp like this so much is as much as we like to say for the attacking side, you get a lot of ult charge. Let's not forget, there is a Moira sat in the back who also gets an absolute shed ton off the fact that she heals everyone so consistently. So having that coalescence online was big for them in that fight. It meant there was no possibility for Hurricane to drop one of the members and Giganti start strong. This is a very, very different story to the last time they played. Well, here we go. Fusion's diving into the fight. Kip, he's popped out the blade, already cut through LH Cloudy with that Discord Orb. Only going to be the one kill for now, but he's putting a blade on to RCK. The fight contained off to the side of the point. They're still contesting it on there, but Kip can't burn through that personal barrier, and he's already been shut down by Davin on that Zarya. The self-destruct on the outside, personal barrier to keep everyone alive. They're only keeping on to this point. They managed the retake while the fight was going on, but Team Giganti, they're the ones in control. Nil just needs that hook onto the hippity hoppity frog. He won't need any hook because he can just get the headshot out of the way. The Coalescence burning through Winston. He's going to go down. Fusion the last one to fall and a retake for Team Giganti. Hurricane really should have run away a long time ago because they're at risk of being staggered here as well. It was a good 30 seconds ago when the first member died for them, but they are still in control of the point. They want to hold on for as long as they can. And at 40%, Giganti start getting the tick back over once again. This is a very stark difference to what we saw in the NA region yesterday. They love their Genji players, but as you saw a second ago, Kib, he had no way in. First he tries to go on the Lucio, gets booped straight back away. Then he goes on to the Moira. There's a Zarya shield waiting for him. The opportunity for a Genji to really pop off like we see so commonly in other regions just does not happen. Here. Happy's got the EMP. There was the Graviton surge to line something up, but it wasn't working out for them. He's going to recall away, but RCK, Cloudy, they're leading the charge for the kills. Transcendence being popped on the point to keep everyone alive. There's a Dragon Blade from Kib. He's going for the back line, but they're too far away. Has to retreat back onto the point with 12 HP, and it just keeps going down. Oh, CK, he's feeling bloodthirsty. He'll get another kill and keep this in Team Giganti's favor. ZP is probably sat somewhere now with his head in his hands like, Quad Tank, no, why does it work so well? And you can see why. Got to say there, though, it was a little bit of a missed time on the EMP because Masar was the other side of the pillar, and he still managed to get that sound barrier down to keep his team alive whilst the EMP was in effect. 
88%, it's nearly in that final fight material for Team Giganti. We're on board with Craggy, just trying to poke down his enemies with this Tracer, but when it's such a beefy lineup, it's not gonna be a quick in and out. Earthshatter being used to take out the back line. Bocket, Fusions, they're the first victims. Deep charge into the wall, no one to be found. The hack is huge from Hathi Call. Will it be enough for British Hurricane to turn it around? But they're all faltering as Team Giganti very much remaining in the dominant position. They're gonna take Shrine and force it out to another round. That is not what we expected coming into today. That's probably one way of putting it. I expected Hurricane to probably try and match them with these tanks. But you can hear the response in the crowd. Giganti, last season's champions. They're looking to make this the second one for these guys. And while Hurricane, they're going to be looking at this and going, right, we planned for this. We had our triple DPS set up. We're using that flexibility of Hafi Call, and it didn't work out for us. My big question now is if they pull him out on the Soldier once again, is it going to work? We know that the triple DPS on Sanctum works for Hurricane. I think that's the first time they brought it out consistently for the entire round on Shrine. Let's put aside the experimental for now, shall we say. Let's see if they can pull it through on Sanctum and show us why their triple DPS works in Europe. Kip's going across to the Sombra though, so actually a total rotation once again. And sometimes we see Kip picking up the Soldier, but clearly they're saying, Happy, it's your time to show my man and Giganti are gonna try and match it. Admittedly only double DPS, but they've got nil on the Soldier. Giganti taking the fight to them, do not want to let them get set up. And it's all about the counter-attack, the slow war of attrition for that territory the British Hurricane wants to get themselves a hold of. You see Neil and the oh. Soldier getting taken out by Funny Astro with the long-range sound beats. And RCK retreating back to the point, they're going to rotate around. British Hurricane has control of the kill feed, so they will have control of this first point. That's very reminiscent of the last time they played Santon, because last time round, Nil actually got uh, poked straight away by the Helix Rockets out of the enemy soldier and died incredibly quickly. And that's what lost in the, the fight last time round. This time, it's the Lucio getting up on the kill feed and bringing him down. Giganti, this is where I start to worry, is can they make this non-quad tank-based composition work? Can they surpass Hurricane in their own composition? Well, Nil's being the better soldier at the moment with the Helix Rocket kills, but it's Bocket and Craggy returning the favor. Just need to get a couple more shots. He Whoa! fights him with Craggy and the Helix Rocket. Gonna get some attention from Fusions diving into the back line. The test account is not enough. Oh. He's been moved off the edge. Funny Astro, the aggro Lucio going behind him, booping him off the edge. British Hurricane sitting at about 35%. And I'm so glad you mentioned Astro's aggressive Lucio there because they, of course, have two Lucio players. They have Crusade and they have Funny Astro. And Astro is regarded as this big, aggressive Lucio player. He likes to get up in their faces, which is why he's so good for control and why they also play him on Hollywood. And in this case there, you can see why. Getting behind the enemy DPS, being unseen and still bringing them down, that's the big plays you want to see out of your Lucios. Primal Rage being popped by Fusion's going to leave back. Craggy gets the DMEC onto RCK and one board with Neil. He's got attack bars. He just needs to pull the go button when he finds the right opportunity. Funny Astro can't even dodge it around. That's an EMP coming out to lock them all down. No ultimate available. They're going to ride the lightning as they're pushed back into their spawn. 68%. It's going to keep rolling up for British Hurricane. Team Giganti cannot get a foothold on Sanctum. It's so bizarre how the first round and the second round have been so different so far. Neither team really showing the weaknesses that they're going to get rolled over in this series. And we always said early on, Trip, we've been saying all day long before this broadcast, the first map will dictate the tone of this series. And this is setting it so perfectly. Diving into that spawn board operating base they have. Nil getting the first kill of the fight. Moving back round onto Craggy, but he's recalling away. He's dashing away. Tack Visor being popped, answered immediately by Nil. But they're sitting in a transcendence. He doesn't have that level of reinforcements on his soldier. But meanwhile, while this is going on, they've got RCK on the point. Reinforcements, Team Giganti take the point with the pressure from Nil forced them too far away. It took them all the way up to 99% of Hurricane's capture to actually take it back for themselves. But now comes that big war of attrition. Hurricane have got to wrestle this point away and they don't have the staying power on the point with this triple DPS setup. They'll probably ride for a big EMP from Kiv. It's not too far away, about 40% to go. And then they'll go for the full take and close this round out. Well, let's see if Dez can be a profit in this matchup as they're moving around to the sides. Craggy already dashed behind Nil. He doesn't care. Sound barrier reinforcing them as they get dived upon. But Bocket gonna go down. Craggy's on the back line. Ripper feeling the burn. Funny Astro dancing around on Lucio. Hacked out of the sky. RCK's been grounded and demeked immediately afterwards. Look at the DPS doing work on that exposed Diva. But they're on the point and that's what counts. Turning it around at 90%. It looks like Craggy and the rest of British Hurricane, they're going to take this round and force out the third map. Potentially, they're still going to go for another couple of fights first. And that big hack coming through from Kib onto the Diva denied the self-destruct. They did not have the staying power required. And it looks like we'll be theirs. You're absolutely right. We're going to Village. 
This is going to be a big one, Trick, because last time it was Triple Tank, Junkrat for both teams, and Hurricane won by a narrow margin. That's just how close this is going to be. What can we say? This series is already shaping up to be what we expected. We definitely did not want to see any two zeros, especially in the first map. And hopefully this back and forth maintains. We go to distance and go to game seven. Because it's the only way this justice, this uh, sorry, this series can be given justice. And already the lineup's coming through. Actually, this time round, one of them opting to go towards Quad Tank. And we saw them run it first time round. Nil going with that Roadhog. And we speak a lot about the Roadhog players that we have. In fact, they're going to change over to the Junkrat, talking about hovers. It's always a beautiful curse, my friend. Let's see if Nil can make this work. Yesterday, uh, it had its highs and lows when he was playing Junkrat. He's got to hit those highest highs today. Well, taking the high ground conflict with that Junkrat behind him, they're going to be clashing. Nil, Kip, who's going to win out on the explosive battle as they're still colliding in the middle. LH Cloudy opens it up with a kill onto his opposing man. The Flame Strike removing fusions from the fight as Nil and Team Giganti use that edge to go forward, but Kip has answered onto Masa. They're rotating around. They don't want to let them have another avenue into the fight. Team Giganti looking very strong at the moment, and they could go for that first cap, but they need to make sure they send British Hurricane home first. That's absolutely the plan. They don't want to back away here and split their team and give Hurricane the high ground advantage. It's so sought after by any team. And Kip brings out the tire, catches no one, but Nil goes down. They've given over the high ground, but they're the ones on the point. Nearly got the full cap. It's being contested by Fusions. Nice shield management there. Just blocking the damage from Davin, and they force Team Giganti out. The Graviton Surge holding them together. They're letting Fusions swing as Craggy cuts through two members, and Bocket getting involved as well. British Hurricane, they turn the fight around and knock Team Giganti off of that first cap. As soon as Nil went down for Hurricane, that was the go trigger. That was the sign they were looking for to say, this is our fight to take. There is no tire online. They don't have the damage to bring down our frontline shields. Let's make it happen, and make it happen they did. Holding that high ground position on top of the bridge. They're not sure where Team Giganti are going to come from. They're opting for the lower ground, and immediately they put the aggression to them. There's a rip tire being thrown out. Nil. He's going to take out Fusions, missing a core component of their tank. Graviton Surge from Team Giganti. Sound barriers answered, but Coalescence shredding through them. It doesn't matter. Nils there with the explosive damage and cuts through those trap targets. And now they take to the high ground. Want to pick off the stragglers. Definitely get a stagger. Self-destruct being thrown out, but it's a bit of a Hail Mary. Funny Astro dancing around somewhere. He's still hippity hopping around. Gets in the interior. Fusions is here with some reinforcements. He's just going to be shredded, though. There's nothing he can do by himself. Team Giganti get, a tap, get the cap, but Kip answers with a double kill. British Hurricane, they might get an immediate retake here. RCK, he's been isolated. The tables have turned. He's got some reinforcements from Davin. British Hurricane back on the point, and they get the cap immediately afterwards, not letting Team Giganti get any ground. That was one of the quickest recaps I think I've ever seen on the control map there. Losing the fight, giving it over to Giganti, and then Kib getting that double kill on the Junkrat. That set them up to take the point back. And look at the old stack online for British Hurricane here. They've got one of those big Fable combos we always speak about with these triple and quad tank compositions. This could be their time to clear it out and take away the first map. Fantastic Earth Shadow could shut it down. Happy Cool leading the charge with the micro missiles. Fusion sitting on one of his own. Just needs to break through that shield. He's going forward, holding down a W key with no tank to shield them. He could Earth Shadow if he wants to, but he doesn't even need to. Davin feeling the swing of the hammer. We've just about to hit 80%. And Team Giganti. They're so far away, but they are not out of this fight. This is the first time between these two teams we will see a big critical mass. All got five, six ultimates online almost. This is going to be the deciding moment for Giganti because Hurricane strength but currently has always been they deal with all stacks very well. They've got to deal with this one coming out of Giganti. Rip tires being traded, sound barrier oh, being dropped bait. on Team Giganti. It's going to stagnate out, wait for the shield to expire. Doesn't get the kill, but there's one going on to Funny Astro. So Nil has that man advantage for Team Giganti. The collision on the point, Graviton Surge pulling Giganti together. Self-destruct being planted behind them. There's some shields, there's some charges. Happy Cool taking out Davin. He goes down, self-destruct, another one there. Kib throws out the explosives, but it's being traded back and forth. The ones on the point, this Team Giganti, they have to remain there for the overtime. Throwing out the concussive mine. British Hurricane, they've got the kills, they've got the percentage, and it looks like they're going to take Nepal. We spoke about the tone, the tone of the crowd, the tone of the teams, the tone of this whole series, and it has been set very, very well in that first map. Nepal, won't lie, we came into this and we said if anyone's going to win Nepal, it's probably going to be Hurricane, but Giganti definitely showed that they aren't here to roll over and die. They want to contend and take away the second season title. Took the fight to them on round one. Also, going into Sanctum, that was a little bit closer 
but still not there. And then we saw it start to lag a little bit when we came to Village, because British Hurricane just had a demanding control over that point. So with Nepal in the bag, it's going to be Team Giganti's choice going up next. And really, I don't know what we're going to pull out, because last time they went on Nambani, I believe. Yeah.